Hello everyone, welcome back to the Proving Grounds. We enter the library where a tale of tales shall be told. From tales from the Borderlands. <laughs> oh wait, wrong person. Anyway, Tales of the Borderlands is a Telltale Games who croaked a year ago and then has resurrected and many of their licenses and games are still floating in fairy dust land and we'll get on that when we talk about the price value but let's get on with it so first setting tales from the borderlands takes place after borderlands 2 and borderlands pre sequel as current time because it's told as a flashback the current time of it takes place during Tales, and it takes place before Borderlands 3. So this is a bit of a middleman for the several games. So you play a bunch of new characters, though they're all different old characters who appear in the game in different capacities. Some used for the full story, and others feel like a bit like wasted potential. So let's get set up. So you play as two characters, one a Karnos, another a pen pusher at Hyperion. Both not really shown to be the greatest of people as the you know, whip people off and things. Now, you get to kind of mold if they grow into good people or not throughout the stories with your quote-unquote choices. And if you're familiar with Telltale Games, with the, oh, your choices all matter and everything, that's... If there's anything I really want from Telltale Games, generally what you're controlling usually is... Who survives until the end with the main characters to see whatever happens at the end, for the most part. And that's what I would say with the choices. Now, I went into this being very negative since most people in general said after the Wolf Among Us, the game quality kept going down. Like, I remember a lot of people say Game of Thrones was, like, one of the fucking worst they did with the Batman one. I've heard that one's pretty damn bad, too. Anyway, so I went into this being very negative, and episode one wasn't really giving me the confidence at first, because to be honest, I was like, well, I'm playing shit bags or trying the shit bag, shit bags, and I just like, I, I don't know if I'm going to really enjoy this so much, and, um... I played with a more righteous loyalty with my friends kind of thing. And honestly, like, I, I actually grew to like the majority of the characters. Now, the thing that I think shines the most in this game is the comedy. Now, like most Toto games, it focuses on a lot of choice dialogue that usually just di dictates people who live and die and a few unique things sometimes that happen in general but with very small puzzles like this is virtually no real quote unquote puzzles in this game the few interactive things in this is basically like here's a cable here's three slots here's literally no puzzle just poke into a hole if it's not the white one well I guess you wasted a minute poke in the next hole and hope that's the next one that moves the story forward and in that aspect it's pretty blah. considering especially you have an inventory system which is pretty meh now each of the two characters you play as one has a cybernetic eye that can examine things you can sometimes find a little additional haha information with his eyeball and there's a few aspects where you use it for the story but overall it's just kind of a time waster for most of the time unless you want to see a few funny lines of dialogue related to some of the things you look at with it while the Connors gathers money with potential opportunities to buy things and the money things kind of... Uh, I, I was kind of a cheapskate most of it, and I did fine overall, so... The money system's just kind of subpar, aside from one really big thing that can happen in Episode 5, if you have enough money. But generally, you find... you <clears throat> In general, you follow these two characters through their... Uh, 
conjointed system of trying to make it witch and getting screwed over and everything falling apart throughout the episodes and that to finally meet where they finally make it witch, supposedly. So, like many of Telltale games, these are told in episodes, and there's five episodes. Now, as far as I understand, all disc copies, PS3, 360, PS4, and Xbox One, are all physical. So, uh, you can you don't have to worry about a one-episode disc-esque system on that. Now, uh, also, pertained to the episode thing, they all have big opening things and credit endings. And, honestly, I kind of wish they wouldn't do that, because that sometimes can get annoying when you're playing them all in a, at one time, you know? It's kind of... Uh, now, as per se with um, Toto games, uh, it's mostly a lot of choices. Now, they're all QTEs to make up for some gameplay. And uh, to be honest, especially in episode 5, there's a pretty decent amount of uh, QTEs that uh, actually were a little bit more fun than usual, to be honest. But uh, they'll, overall, uh, for the other episodes, they're a little bit more light. Or, you know, dodge, move here or there, and sometimes button mash this one button here. Now, there is also that telltale jankiness, because they've pretty much used the same engine for all of these games for, like, ten-something years, and there were some pop-ins, like, I remember one time where half a team popped in before another half of the team, uh, killed the models sometimes sliding when they're just standing s still, few weird things, also there was a few times where the audio... Especially in episode one, it wasn't as noticeable in other parts, but like I remember there were like two times in episode one where the music for some reason became extremely louder than the talking audio for a little bit. It was very odd. Very, very, very odd. Now, the, the game... The game is about... Every episode's about like two hours long. And like I said, there were five episodes, so it's a bit, uh, it's a bit up there. But overall, I'd say the biggest treasure in this ge in this in this game is the story. Like, I went into it very negative, and I thought it was really fucking funny. Now, I'm not a big Borderlands person. I thought the first game was really cut and dry when it came to its story. It was basically something to play with friends. Now, two was the where things started to shine more because Handsome Jack was an actually interesting villain in Kirtle because there was no real antagonist for the first game because you basically killed everyone that came in front of you. So it never really had a upstanding villain throughout the game, really. And then the pre-sequel... It was kind of a mess. Even Handsome Jack didn't really save that. And I was kind of like, I, can't, I don't know where these characters are going to do it. But they really, they really turned around. There's a lot of sarcasm and f just good humor in this. Like, there's a lot of great character interactions. There's some really great characters building. It's honestly, I, I wish. I hope the majority of these fucking characters were torn in future Borderlands stuff. Because seriously, these these characters being thrown to the waste side is probably going to be the greatest crime of the series, honestly. Because these, these are some of the most likable characters, actually. Like, they really grew on me. I love their interactions. And they're still not necessarily great people, but it just... It was a very humorous thing. Now, you know, this is more on the story side and very less, very lacking on the gameplay-esque side of things. So, obviously it's a mixed bag there. I always consider the perfect kind of thing is the balance between having a good story and good gameplay. And sometimes you don't always have to do that, but especially being a video game, it's pretty hard to justify being a very simplistic story with very lacking gameplay. Like, something like 420H to Booty Scramble, you know, there was a lot of puzzle solving in that, trying to get all the people to survive through the storylines, even though it was a visual novelist game. It actually still incorporated 
a good chunk of actual gameplay into it. So, it's not perfect, but honestly, the humor, in my opinion, is worth a 10 buck fee or just watching somebody play it if that's your cup of tea also. Um, I think that's actually one of the charms with Telltale Games is just watching how people choose to do things in, like, Let's Plays. I think that's some of the extra fun you can get out of them. But um, the humor is definitely worth it, in my opinion. I really think that's worth a nice $10 mission. And depending on which system, apparently the PS4 version is going up in price in some place, being 20 to $30, where you got the previous-gen system ones being around $10, and the Xbox One version floating around $12, well, right now. And the reason I mention those is for those that are into digital or don't care about the physical, um, in this scenario, as the moment of this video, you're screwed. There is no digital option. Uh, at this moment, there has not been any resolution to the stats of bringing this game back to sale at of this time. Supposedly, Gearbox is trying to get that fixed, but with Telltale Games coming back, there was obviously a chance of that happening eventually, hopefully, for people interested in this game. But luckily, there were four different systems is on physically, so it's not like it's completely lost, but it's an excellent example how the digital age is a hindrance instead of a good thing, in my opinion. So, what would I say the value of this game? I think 10 bucks. 10 bucks, like I was saying, for the emission of the comedy is a good price for this, in my opinion. You know, it has a lot of the same problems many Telltale games have, but this, this is a funny one, to be honest. It's, it's definitely worth the humor, in my opinion. Now, this isn't like high-class humor. A lot of this can be low-class humor here, so... Kind of depending on your type of uh, humor, it might not be your type of thing, but if you like Borderlands games already, well, fuck, strap yourself in, because you're going to dial that up to nine. <laughs> but if uh, Borderlands humor isn't your cup of tea, then this probably ain't going to change your mind in that regard, but... Uh... That's bad. And, and, you know, if you're into trophies and stuff, all you have to do is play through the game so you can get platinum, thousand points, and all that kind of crap. Really easy with this game. It's a very simple one. Telltale game. I don't know of any of the Telltale games that don't have easy trophies, honestly. But um, those are my thoughts on that, Joe. Thanks. So let's go into spoilers. So if you don't want spoilers, you better turn around. So, spoilers. So, like I said, you play as two characters. They're trying to go through cons and moving up in life. And that all goes fucked up and lots of terrible shit happens and backstabbing shit between your friends and things. And who can you trust and stuff. But it all generally ends finding this robot that can lead to a vault. So they're like, oh shit, more treasure. So they're trying to complete the robot. But you act... Your journey, you get an AI Jack in the male lead's head. So Jack, an AI hologram of Jack, also gets involved in this mess. And at an eventual point, Jack uploads himself into Helios when they're trying to get the last part for the robot. So Jack becomes a giant space station, you know, and he's like trying to, you know, do his usual Jack stuff, you know, and take care of him. Take care of a few of the problematic people, and then you make a vault team for episode 5, and uh, you summon the vault, kick the monster's ass, and uh, collect the loot. Now, um, the slight Wii Play you can get out of this one, normally Telltale games are pretty lacking in Wii Play, but when you choose the vault hunters, depending on who survives or some of your choices, you... You get to pick three additional people to join your team to do the vault. And you get a few options. Like, the I didn't have enough money to hire the vault hunters, who I don't even know who they were, because it doesn't tell you. It just told me I didn't have enough money. 
So that was option. I didn't get Zero because apparently he needed to know we were Volt Hunters, and that apparently never actually happened. And Felix died in my storyline, and apparently he could have helped. So, yeah, you get a little variety there, and the reason that's a little variety is because the giant robot Power Ranger moment in Episode 5, um, Gordis uses the combats of the pilots, so the pilots will be your team, so it changes depending on who's in it, so that could be worth maybe replaying a little if you really want to see, but that's not like the... Most greatest reason, in my opinion, but, you know, I've seen lesser reasons to replay games in some people, so, you know, considering Telltale is also, <laughs> but, generally, I, I really enjoyed the game. It's certainly not perfect, like, one of the bigger flaws, in my opinion, I think Episode 1's one of the weakest flaws, because, you see, like I said, this game's being told in a flashback at a current time period where the two main characters get kidnapped while they're telling the story. So, the kidnapper actually turns out to be, um, uh, Lodobot. And he kidnaps you because he thinks you betrayed the his friend. Now, what's interesting when you look into the development, because I went to read a few things about this game after I finished it, is, um... Apparently, that was made mid-game to make the kidnapper Lodobot. It actually, they had no idea who the kidnapper was when they first started making this game and releasing the episodes. So at some point after episode 1, they decided to make it Lodobot. So episode 1 feels like a weird clash to the West of the story and definitely like because Shade who appears in a DLC in Borderlands 2 he only appears in episode 1 so anything you do with him doesn't matter like becoming friends with him doesn't matter because he never appears again I actually went and specifically looked up if anything else in the game involved him he is only in episode 1 and anything you do with him doesn't actually fucking matter so Episode 1 just kind of feels meh compared to the rest of the game because they didn't have it fully planned out. So, it's definitely not perfect at all, like I said. But, I still enjoyed the game. It has really good humor. I was really laughing my ass off at a lot of stuff. And I liked it some of the game. I, got, I liked some of the characters. I liked some of the games. Now, I liked some of the characters, uh, especially Lodobot, oddly. Uh, Lodobot was, like, the most awesome fucking bro in the game. Like, dude sacrificed a lot of shit. Um, Lodobot, bell peel in the fucking future of Borderlands. I mean, totally. Hell, most of these kills bell peel in the future of Borderlands, because, honestly, these, this is a nice, nice team of insects. It's sane people, honestly. Now, I like some of the characters in Borderlands too, But overall, Jack really was the centerpiece of Borderlands 2. Now, but overall, there were some better characters in Borderlands 2. And these characters are really good and play off each other and stuff. So, I'd love to see some more of that involve into Borderlands 3. Because still, even though while I liked Borderlands 2 way more than the other Borderlands pre in the first one... You know, it's still not the biggest frontline type thing to me. So, he was hoping Borderlands 3 might be a big leap of awesome for me, maybe. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. But I'm looking forward to hopefully some more of the Kaldos being in there. And maybe some pale Kaldos in the future, you know. But honestly, this is such a waste of Kaldos, in my opinion, if they don't add these. But, uh, that to me. But anyway, again, as the moment of this video, this is not available digitally on any store funds. Now, it is on PC, so you could technically pilot. Not that I'm trying to say do that, but that would be your only option for PC, because I don't think there was a physical disc of this on PC. It was on GOG, I believe, so that would probably make it uh, more hopeful that you could uh, find some way of getting it out. But anyway, um, 
For everyone, er, everyone else, unless you're going to wait and hope for a digital version, you'll have to get a physical version. And like I said, as far as I can tell, all disc versions have all episodes on disc. Apparently, Tales of the Borderlands was a little before they started doing the one episode disc shit that started to be so more common with some of their later games, which is garbage. And this is exactly why it turned out to be garbage, because now there's a mess of games that aren't complete because half of them aren't available for downloads and digital and shit. So, ugh. but that's a whole nother subject. Either way, Tales from the Borderlands is worth a solid ten dollars for me in my book. I really enjoyed the humor, but for the love of humanity, I wish Telltale's would prove a lot more on the gameplay. I mean, look at something like fucking Undertale. Undertale ain't a vastly long game either, and it's an excellent mix of fucking story, characters, and gameplay. I mean, come on, Telltales. But Telltales is coming back. They opened up and uh, they announced The Wolf Among Us 2, which was probably a smart move considering a lot of people went there for quite a bit of the end life of them, so uh, hopefully I wish uh, wish them uh, better and devils on their future projects, hopefully. But anyway, if you feel like you learned something interesting in this video, please feel free to leave a like, and if you feel like you learned nothing at all, and you'll always remember this forever and ever, feel free to leave a dislike, guilt free. And if you have anything to ask, feel free to leave a comment down below. And Telltale Games will remember the subjective opinions of this video. Till next time, the Proving Gowns will be judged. <laughs> So, so.